What up, players? It's Warboss Tail up in this mood. I thought I'd do something a little fun and different for tonight, Saturday night. And um, I've got a built up and primered orc. Um, I think this is a I think this is a hard boy because he's got lots of it's an hard boy because he's got lots of uh, armor on him. Uh, making this video for my good friend Hippo. He's been feeling a little depressed lately, so I thought I'd do a, a video on orcs to uh, give him a little little spark of encouragement. So um, for for those of you out there, there's going to be a little how to or how to war boss Tay paint your orc figures. And my um, orc fluff for those of you who don't know is that I see them as a whole bunch of um, free Buddhas roaming around the universe united under this one warlord and so they all come from different tribes and different clans and um, you have the six major clans here blood axes, bad moons, death skulls, evil suns, goths, and snake bites and uh, I, I added in the ubiquitous uh, Z just uh, for fun so what I do is when I've got a whole bunch of orcs I've decided the reason why I want to do this is because I didn't want to just stick to <coughs> to one paint scheme. <clears throat> I think that's kind of a you know that's if you want to do that why not just play Space Marines which uh, hey what do you know I have Space Marines too but for my orcs I was like you know what I, I like all six different styles they each got a different style and thing that makes them interesting and unique I'm just gonna be drilling out this guy's slugger while I talk. Um, so why why limit yourself to just one? So uh, the thing is too, it, I'm not just deciding what you know what each unit is going to be. In every single unit, every single model in my army is going to go through this table where I decide what they're going to be. Um, and I think I think that's uh, going to be an interesting way to to make my force different. And the, the way they're unified is going to be through their bases. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh. So, okay, so I've drilled out my guy's little little slugger here, so now I'm going to roll a dice because this is a game of dice, and um, it's a six-sided dice, so let's see if I've got one on hand. Ooh, there's my nice red Vegas one. So, whatever I roll is going to correspond to this chart and decide how I'm going to do a painting tutorial on this guy. Six, which is snake bites. So snake bites are the um, equivalent, the or orky equivalent to, uh, you know, the the pri uh, tribal, more primitive orcs. So they're not as um, they're not as into the technology as the as the other clans. They they try to adhere to the old ways, as they say. Um, let me actually see if I can get a. Got some kind of fluff here on my computer. 40k orcs snake bite. Yeah, and um, I painted up a bunch of snake bites for my orky free Buddha force already. And I found like if you use a lot of um, a lot of den of stone for bone <coughs> and some reds, um, then it'll be. Um, you know that way to show like if you do dags like triangles geometric shapes um, It'll be really good. So here we go looking at 40k wiki the Warhammer 40k wiki the snake bites are a well-known tribe or clan with the K of orcs The snake bites are considered to be a backward tribe by many of the more technologically advanced tribes of orcs and There we go Here's a good little guy to show He's got a lot of dust on him um, and I'll keep reading. For they still follow the old ways of the orc race and often remain feral orcs. Can you see them? Even after they gain access to more advanced technology. As a result of their rugged style, the snake bites are usually weather beaten and as tough as an old boot. They are experts in the field of breeding orcoid creatures, and their grats and squigs are the fiercest amongst all of the green skin tribes. The Snakebite clan's name and emblem comes from a tribal rite of passage that requires a young aspirant to full membership in the tribe to goad an extremely poisonous serpent into biting him and then sucking out the venom to prove his resilience. 
orcs of the snake bite clan thus build up a powerful immunity to natural poisons and keep various species of snakes and tox arachnids as pets. They always carry a selection of venomous beasts with them when they migrate to a new world in case the local varieties of snake prove disappointingly benign. So here was my modified orc knob snake bite as you can see and um, I made him look <coughs> especially hard with the um, totem headpiece and back banner. I think it was supposed to uh, be, this is supposed to be kind of like the wall banner when I put him in my unit of, of um, knobs. But Okay, there we go. So that's the kind of standard we're going to be painting this guy up to. So enough with the fluff. Let's get into some painting. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some Narlock Green as the base of the skin. I'm also going to be using Camry Brown, Calvin Brown, <coughs> sorry about that, <coughs> as um, different strap colors on his body. And I'm finally also be gonna, gonna be using the ever popular Warboss Tay Special Denim Stone. My favorite. And uh, finally, for the pieces of weaponry and stuff that he does have on him, we're going to be doing some bolt gun metal. So let's get started with the skin, which as I said is uh, Narlock Green. So Hippo, I hope you're doing okay. Um, hope everything's okay with you. I hope everything's okay with all of you out there in the internet land. Man, after doing like the Ogre Iron Blaster and really detailed work like with Isabella and stuff, it's gonna be nice to just paint up a regular old orc. Narlock Green isn't even going to be your, um, we're, we're not even going to really see it because we're going to be painting and covering with them um, like Snot Green and Goblin Green in just a little while so Narlock Green is really to just uh, give you a little green palette to work off of so don't be afraid if you know you, you miss some pieces, you miss some places in the model or whatever. if you get it on another part of the model. As you'll notice, um, for those of you who've seen my um, other primered minis that are not as black as this, this was back when I used to prime in a matte black spray and I've been just kind of holding on to these models waiting for some motivation to paint them. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to Put the put the iron blaster aside for a little bit and do something that will make me worthy of my name, War Boss Tay. So with 40k orcs, or with fantasy orcs, not as much with 40k orcs, you have a, a lot of different skin places. Like some of the fantasy orcs have skirts or kilts or whatever those things are, but when you're painting 40k orcs, you really only are using green paint to cover the neck, the face, the arms and hands. Everything else is covered with cloth or armor. Just like that. Oop, I missed his left hand. One moment, please. Some of them have gloves, so that's also helpful. So when I think of snake bites, I think of um, 
like a lot of cloth and leather and what have you they they kind of shy away from the metal so <coughs> so I'm gonna let's go with some Calthin brown pants When I think of the color combos, I try to think ahead. Like if I'm doing Calton Brown, then what am I going to use to color like these ammo pouches or the straps or um, stuff like that? So my alternate color that I'm working with is Camry Brown, which is what I'm going to be using for those. So it's always better to plot ahead rather than get stuck when you're already halfway through painting. <coughs> okay, I started also working on the straps on his upper body with the Camry Brown. So you should be covering most of his uh, harness there. And in the back down there, um, I'm also going to use Camry Brown to color in his, I guess, wrist, <coughs> his bracelets. glove on this side. I love orcs, they were my first uh, fantasy army. And even when I switched over to 40K for a little while, they were the first thing that I started really earnestly painting. Um, and it helped because when I got back into the hobby, the attack or assault on Black Reach game, the box set, the starter set for 40K with the orcs and space marines and came out and um, it was really easy to get into. For the first time, orcs had uh, classic death coptas and um, it came with its own war boss and all of these great figures and it's still out now for a little while before they change box sets into the next edition so um, if you're a beginning player if you've never played the game before it's a great way to pick up a small rule book the assault on black reach set okay so now we're going to get to work on the harness for that we're going to use or i mean the the actual um, shirt and use denim stone kind of like a very uh, dirty we're gonna try to my, my goal is to make it look like a dirty beat up wife beater which is a style of uh, undershirt which I don't know if they have anywhere in Europe or I don't know what you call it but here in America America there is usually only one type of person who wears these so-called wife beaters and um, their 40k equivalent I would assume would be these snake bite clan orcs if you get my drift Also going to do is paint denim stone onto this guy's shoulder pad, his right shoulder pad, his topper one, top upper one. <coughs> 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 
<coughs> what are you doing, Warbaste? Are you mad? No! I'm extremely happy. And I have a plan, so don't worry. Now, Deneb Stone, being the color for, for bones, is also going to be the color we're going to use for our teeth. So, if your guy has any teeth on him, all these orcs look different, so, I mean, yours might not look like mine, but, you know, just copy and paste whatever techniques work for you. <coughs> guy's got a nose ring too, which if he was any other clan, I would paint in bolt gun metal, but because he's a snake bite, I'm going to give him a bone, like an ivory nose ring, so then I'm stone for that too. Just as a placeholder. Sorry, excuse me. Um, let's see, what else? I'm also going to paint up the hilt of his choppa. And this is a slugger boy, but pretty much all of these techniques can be used on a you know, if you have a shooter boy as well. Just looking for a quick, easy scheme to do snake bites. Hey, if you like this style, let me know. I might do another orc clan. Um, luck of the draw kind of thing. It'll help me get my mounds and mounds of boys painted anyway. Um, I'm also going to use Denim Stone to paint the leg wraps down here at the bottom. Ooh, too much paint on the brush. Contrasting color to this bone white, just like in the guy I showed you, is going to be mechrite red. So I'm looking for things that I can paint in Deneb stone to get this kind of bone white color that it has a contrasting or alternate design pattern or something on it that I can paint in mechrite red. <clears throat> so, uh, oh, his wife beater in the front. So, how y'all doing? Hope everything is going well for you. I might zoom it out a little so that we're not as close in. Got my wet palette right there on this top of the camera. Mm -hmm. 
So, as you might have noticed by looking at the runtime for this video, this isn't going to be the quickest way to paint up an orc. And I've seen lots of great videos here on YouTube that is like speed paint an orc in you know eight minutes or whatever. And this this is not that. This is for if you want to get the War Boss Taste standard. Um, it's pretty much a very loose term to me to mean um, you know something that would make me happy to field. I can't. I guess that makes me not a very good gamer because I cannot stand to look at an army if I know that I did not do my best on it on the on the in the painting table process in the process of painting it. That's what I mean. It's a pet peeve of mine, I guess. The last thing we're going to do with our denim stone is paint up the little the little stitches on the back of this guy's trousers. Orcs and ogres love their stitches. If you make a mistake, so you see I clearly have put too much in certain areas. Then just go back over with your Calton Brown. Okay, we're continuing, and as you can see, I've started adding on the mechrite red to the bone here at the bit, beginning of the slugga, the belt buckle, <coughs> the little feet, um, I guess, boot caps, and here to the, oops, to the uh, plate on that end. I'm also gonna take the red and use it to color in this guy's left shoulder pad. <coughs> <coughs> Um, we're gonna make dags, which means um, strong geometric shapes and specifically triangles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just connect the dot from from like here to there. There's one. really important that you fill in the triangles at this point just um, adding in a little bit of color to get some frame so now is one we're going to be serious about and if um, you feel like you mess up no worries man just go back in some Deneb stone and fix it later. The um, trick is not to get discouraged right at the beginning. Finish the pattern, get all the way through, make all the mistakes you want. Now, after you're done with the pattern, now is when you go in with the Deneb stone and you clean it up. Give it a second to dry first. Then get some denim stone on your white palette. And just do the opposite. We're making denim stone triangles now. This part 
particular shoulder pad has um has like bullet holes and stuff which make it kind of harder but it's okay that's okay so um now we're going to take our <coughs> sorry bolt gun metal and we're going to start painting the metallics thinking of actually how to do the sword first I thought oh we'll make it um just like <coughs> the shoulder pad dags all the way down and then I was like oh, I can't do that because the shoulder pad is right there on the right side so I've got another idea which I'll let you in on later the great thing about um, these snake bites as a clan is that they they will use technology like all these guns these sluggers and and stuff but they will not be very happy about it which means that they don't really take very good care of it their upkeep is not going to be that great so i can do a lot of stuff with the rust and um not too much vertigris because there's no real um uh, most of it is like silver and I think somebody left a comment on one of my videos saying that the oxidization oxidation oxidization only happens on like brass or gold or non-silver kinds of metals or something something to that effect which made more sense to me <laughs> <coughs> but we can do lots of great brown rust brownish rust on these silver metallics which I intend to do. They're hard boys, so, you know. The, um, the addition of this metallic paint too also is going to kick your motivation up a notch <coughs> because we're adding a new level to, to our model painting. Whereas before it's just very flat, basic, solid colors. These are bullets on the back, they don't look like teeth. They're not curved like teeth. 
So this is pretty much our base colors for our snake bite. Next what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the <coughs> the um it's not green to pick out his skin a little bit more. Make his skin start to pop. Be a little bit more vibrant, so it's not green. This is also very similar to the scheme that I use for my Fantasy Savage works if you've seen them and like them. I'm planning on doing a separate tutorial for them because they've got a whole different way of, or, you know, they've got a whole way of doing their, their, their tattoos and their markings and stuff. And snake bites are really, I guess snake bites are like the 40k equivalent to Savage works just without special rules. That make them different from regular, uh, from from other clans. In this edition, anyways. But yeah, they they're pretty much the uh, aversion to technology, adherence to the quote unquote old ways of the orcs, make these guys very, uh, very much the savage orcs of the 40, 40th millennium, forty first millennium. I think this is a assault on Black Reach boy because one arm has a glove and the other doesn't. Oh yeah, duh, he's on a slot of base. I'm just talking out loud. I don't, you know what? Don't don't pay any attention to me. If you're painting your own stuff, if you're not even watching this video to know how to paint an orc boy, but just to have someone to while away the hours with then that's totally fine man let's paint together this green is very um incredible hulkish Tada! That looks pretty cool, man. <clears throat> so, next step washes and then highlights. Okay, for the washes section, you're gonna need three paints Devlin Mud, Thraka Green, and Padab Black. We're gonna start with. Devlin mud up in this mood. And paint anything that is not orc skin. And I love how the Devlin mud is really um makes it look very tribal and savage and primitive <clears throat> The 
wristband and the sword oops chopper don't worry if um it seems kind of weird all the silver metallics are going to give a little bit of a like i said that rusted look This is going to really tone down that um, bone colored denim stone. If it's too bright for you, then this is perfect. Hear my doggy snoring. <coughs> uh, Nurgle. Nurgle. Devlin mud. While that's drying, we're gonna get on with the Thraka green. And I love Thraka green. It really um, does amazing work on the snot green skin color of orcs and goblins that I paint. We're just painting the face, the arms, the legs, or not the legs. This is a fantasy orc. This is a 40k orc. We're gonna let that sit, let that dry, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a little bit of a Devlin or a, a bad eye black wash over the parts of the Devlin mud wash that need a little bit more shading. Just kidding. Oh, we totally forgot about the rust. Okay, so we're gonna take our bestial brown before we get on to the skin and the um, and the tribal markings. We're gonna take bestial brown and I'm gonna wipe most of it off, like here onto my soft, now completely dried, wet palette. Just wipe most of it off, and we're gonna paint it into the creases of all of the silver met metallics. And you can really be just kind of um, free about where, where the paint goes get it like around the rivets around like the little screws and stuff because it's supposed to look old and not very well kept <laughs> my wet palette is completely dried up See like and his helmet there. Oh, that looks very like corroded, rust. You can even have like streaks going down the sides if you want. Ah, that's so awesome. I remember when I first learned the trick of doing this, I thought it would ruin 
my paint job that I've already done. Like I spent so so long getting the um, metallics to look just right. Why would I want to cover it up with this gross brown color? But no, it really does work. It's just like painting blue under the eyelids for an ogre or um, painting red on uh, the bottom lip of, of the character. It creates something interesting, an interesting contrast to look at. and definition to the natural curve of the sword. Yeah. There you go. Instant rust. The snake boys don't like technology and keeping up with all that. Touching up the skin is just basically going back over with your snot grain. And I'm not going to spend too much time with that because the Thraka grain already does such a good job of adding shading and definition that really the snot grain is just for picking out parts that are going to get caught really um There's no need to go over the whole the whole model again. Okay, so let's add some tribal markings now. You're gonna take some mechrite red and. This is the same way that I paint the the bands, the tribal tattoo bands around my Savage Orcs for Warhammer Fantasy. It's not completely dry yet. Do it on this side. Now he's already got his dags on the shoulder pad. Okay, I'm gonna stop the video for a second. Let this um, let it dry. Maybe use the micrite red to touch up the red shoulder pieces. Yeah, you want you don't want to paint on wet surface surfaces ever. It's not good. So I, I try to drill out all the holes of my guns. I try to. Sometimes I get lazy and I forget, but um, I find that it's just, you know, it's much more realistic. It adds that, that little bit of realism that that it could, it could fire rather than rather than just having it completely stopped up because imagine if like with the ogre iron blaster if the cannon was like you know so huge 
and this was all like stopped up and just like a flat surface wouldn't make any sense. Alright, I'm just gonna go. We're just gonna go. We're gonna truck ahead because I don't wanna film anymore. So this it's gonna take just too long to upload and render. Okay, so we're gonna take our mech right red, put it on a dry brush, and we're gonna just paint one solid band across the whole arm around the bicep. This could be as thick or as thin as you want. I haven't done one of these in a long time, so I'm gonna make it a little thicker. Once that's done, I'm gonna let it dry. And then we're gonna use the skin color to turn them into dags triangles. Okay, I'm gonna let that, oh, sorry about that. I'm gonna let that dry. I have to move my lamp over. Igor! Sorry, monster. I was on the phone. I was on the telly with Katarina. My girlfriend, who's a high elf, which should add all sorts of hilarious hijinks to these videos. My channel is not a sitcom for your relationship stuffs. Igor, what would Lewis say if he found out that you were dating a high elf? I don't know. But our love is real, monster. We want to get married and have little pointy eared monster children. Yeah, Igor. We never really determined what you are, did we? No. I just assumed I was some sort of hunchback humanoid creature that lives in your basement off of food scraps and little children who come by I was wondering what happened to those Girl Scouts wanted to order more cookies from them. They were delicious. The cookies? The Girl Scouts. All right, there's the tribal band. Dag's done. So as you can see, it's really that simple. All you do is make a band in one solid color and then go back over it with your original color. So this is my Savage Orc, or not Savage Orc, but Snake Bite Orc from the Snakebite clan. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you liked it. The video is kind of long, sorry about the long intro, but thought that's a, a, a fun and fluffy way to, to do an army. You know, to let the, let the dice gods choose what kind of color scheme you're gonna do. So, hope you're feeling better, Hippo. Hope this kind of gave you some insight <coughs> as to how I paint my snake bites when I have to paint them. And uh, for everybody, I hope this gave you a little bit of insight on how I paint my orcs in general. And uh, so thanks again for watching, for seeing through all that, and we'll see you in the next video.